One. First off, let me explain a bit about myself. I'm a musician living in Berlin. I'm in quite a successful and productive part of my career. I just got married as well, to my other roommate who is also an old friend. The thing is, three years ago we invited a guy, Mike, to move in. Mike and I have had a few situations where we didn't speak because of tension and fights between us. And I didn't want that anymore, so I have really worked on being calm. We don't talk very often, he doesn't say hello or goodbye when he leaves, which is... whatever. But not super friendly. He also kind of lives in squalor and doesn't seem focused. He stays up all night, often playing video games at 8am, which means he often sleeps till 1 or 2 in the afternoon. It's a very different vibration than the two of us. We're both quite ambitious, she's a photographer, videographer. We're both kind of done with living with someone who doesn't seem ambitious and plays video games all night and drinks. The problem as to why I'm writing here is that I have a piano. He hates the sound of the piano. He moved in knowing I'm a musician, so I can't fully understand what the issue is. I've tried arranging times for me to play and rehearse, but it never works. At first, he asked if I could play afternoon. However, even though he said that, I played afternoon one day and he flipped out and screamed at me. So then he said I can play when he's out of the house. However, he is now home all the time. He denies it and claims that he's rarely home. No idea why he says that, unless he thinks we're stupid. He used to work in a restaurant, but now he's only working one day a week in the restaurant and hosts a comedy show once a week. So a few weeks back he jammed with a friend, even though he doesn't allow me to play piano. They jammed quite loud, so I took him aside and said if he wants the freedom to play with his friend, I would like the freedom to play piano in the house, as I'd like to get better at my piano playing skills. He said I could then play it too. He said something like, I'm normally gone by then anyway, but he's not. He claims he leaves at latest three, but... These days, he often stays in all day. I was getting sick and tired of this, and my friend suggested I play at 10am, as I want piano to be part of my morning routine. He even said if the roomie rages, I need to play, and me simping to him isn't allowing me to grow as a musician. 10am is a reasonable hour, and if he chooses to stay up gaming all night till 8am, it's not really my issue. So I did that this morning. He raged, barged into my room without knocking, and yelled, I really hate the sound of that thing! And then barged in again and asked if I am angry at him. No, I said. He left again. He doesn't realize, but I will be doing this every morning. It's not worth trying to find a compromise, because clearly compromises don't work. And I'm tired of putting his alcoholism above my piano playing. Two other things. One, we can't kick him out. We're all subletting here. And the landlord said if there's an issue, we have to sort it out. Two, yes, we could look into moving out, but A, it's insanely difficult to find a place in this city, and B, I feel like since I was there first, I want him to leave. He also lied to us. He told my wife he rarely smokes weed and will only smoke it outside or on the deck. Truth is, he smokes plenty every day and does it in his room. Now that I'm standing up for myself regarding the piano, I think she's more inspired to stand up for herself regarding the weed. My hope is he'll get tired of the piano and move out. I'm done with compromises. Also, he played YouTube the other day quite loud for many hours. I checked the decibels, and it was 10 decibels louder than my piano. So clearly he's acting entitled and belligerent. He could also just go for a walk or wear headphones or just allow me the space to make my music in my own home. There will be anger and rage again tomorrow, but I'm playing till 10.30 latest. But before I do, I'm getting a lock for my door so he can't just barge in. 2. I'm a 30-year-old woman, was in a domestic violence situation while I was pregnant, and subsequently forced to move out of where I was staying at 6 months pregnant. I had only had a job for two weeks, so money was very tight. My family is very selfish and uncaring, and would not agree to house or help me during this time. In my last month in my house, I met a co-worker, a 27-year-old woman, who urged me that I needed her help. My plan was to go get a cheap apartment and basically raise my child as best as I could alone, but she told me that I would definitely need help, and that if I would rent with her, then she would help me. Initially, we got along very well. 
We both have jobs that require good morals, and she has three young children. I moved in with them, and it was their last month in the house. I began to notice that her husband, 29, would yell a lot. He didn't work or go to school. He would only help with childcare and even did that poorly. All of the cleaning was left to my coworker. I brought up the yelling to her and she said that she would speak to him about it. She seemed to not have a lot of control over the situation because he would yell at her also, even on their anniversary. We had to find somewhere new and we did. The rent was $2,200 and I agreed to pay $1,000 but no utilities. I am one very pregnant woman and she has three children and her husband, so I felt paying more wasn't fair and financially I couldn't do it anyways. She makes much more money than I do, I am on government assistance and had to plan for maternity leave. I had also loaned them $2,000 because the husband's car was going to be repossessed it was always a loan, but when it became more apparent that they are in debt and terrible with money, I said that I could just not pay rent for two months while I'm on maternity leave, and make much less while on disability. I also brought a lot of food into the house and solely paid for the refrigerator, which was $1,100. Roommate was supposed to pay for half of the fridge. We moved into the new house on June 12th, and I took the only upstairs bedroom, which also had a bathroom. It was a decent size, but basically just a good sized room. They took the entire downstairs, which is three bedrooms, the kitchen, the living room, and the backyard. The master bedroom has a jacuzzi tub, walk-in closet, and shower. I was willing to compromise at the time, thinking that I was with friends, that the common spaces would be shared, and I would have access to the kitchen, living room, and yard. As time passed, her husband's behavior declined, her and I both worked physically demanding full-time jobs and did all of the cleaning. I worked overnights and would wake up to him screaming at the children, eight male, two male, and one-year-old female. The eight-year-old is hers from a previous relationship. I brought it up to my co-worker and she finally admitted that he had bipolar disorder and doesn't always take his meds. A big reason why the couple had left friends and family behind and moved here a few months ago was because his abusive behavior came out and everyone was telling her to divorce him. Initially, she agreed with me that it was a problem, that he had to get a job and that it wasn't fair to anyone. I didn't want to be around him because of how he acts, so I ended up stuck in my room all day and unable to use the downstairs or my fridge. It came to a head when they had a particularly bad fight and I threatened that if they didn't quiet down, I would be calling the cops. The fight was about the eight-year-old telling his maternal grandmother that the husband had choked him, and this came out because he had yanked the two-year-old's arm after becoming frustrated with him. She begged me not to call the cops, so I didn't, and a big factor in that was that I had to go to work. The next day, the couple began messaging me, telling me that I should either be more understanding or that I should go. They said moving was too much for the husband, some grace would be appreciated brought up how they had helped me in various ways. I had helped them too, so I thought we were pretty even. If not, they were more in debt to me, like the $2,000 I loaned them. And that frankly, they were sick of me complaining about his behavior. They would not agree to sign me off of the lease until I paid $5,500. Half of every month I wouldn't be there. They mentioned that they were driving across the state for a few days, and I began planning on how to bail. I contacted my family and basically just begged them to help me and explain the situation, and they finally agreed to help me, and that they would help with the baby when she's here. On the 4th of July, I came with my brothers and we grabbed all my stuff and left. I took only my things, but I did take everything down to my food. The only thing that was left was my fridge. When I came four days later while they were gone, put all their food on the counter and left with. I also kept the keys and until I'm off the lease, I won't give them back. Now they're contacting me and threatening to sue me for either the full amount that I owed, $1,100, or half the amount, $5,500, if I pay it in full by the 18th. They also want compensation for the food I removed from my fridge. The keys I have and don't intend to repay me for the $2,000 I loaned them. I have tons of evidence and messages and the landlord is aware of the situation. What should I do? I'm due to give birth in two weeks. If she doesn't come sooner, 
I'm already paying for a lawyer to discuss the child custody agreements. Could I sue them later for the money back, since they violated the lease by causing a nuisance to me and creating an unsafe environment, and by not disclosing his mental health issues? Again, they asked me to go and then turned around angry that I did. I'm willing to pay the 5500 to the landlord because then they will sign me off the lease, but does anyone here know if I have a leg to stand on in getting any money back after I do that? If I pay that, then they will owe me 7500 not counting the $7,000 deposit I helped put on the house. Thank you to anyone who read this and offered any advice. Hell freezer's note, take a good look at your lease and see what your rights are regarding breaking the lease early. Any money that gets paid to anyone should be paid solely to your landlord, not to your former housemates. Secondly, you need to call CPS. Those children are being abused. If you found out something really bad had happened to one of them later and that you could have done something about it now, you'll never forgive yourself, so please make that call. If you do have to ultimately pay to get off the lease, then, as you said, pay the money to the landlord, and all your dealings regarding this matter should only be through them. I hope both that and the custody agreement work out well for you. 3. So I moved into a flat last year. There was a couple and a few other lads in the remaining rooms. Things were alright, I suppose. Picked up quite a few things from them, some good, some bad. Never ever be flatmates with a couple, especially if you don't know them well. Anyway, a couple of months before I eventually moved out, I was already thinking of lugging it. I couldn't keep up with the rent anymore, and the distance from the flat to my uni and workplace was absolutely dreadful. Thirty minutes just to get to the bus stop, and I was not having it. So I had a chat with Ellie, the pseudo-leader of the flat, and she was like, Oh, I understand. Why don't you just share your room with someone and split the rent? I didn't want to do that and rejected the idea. Then went back to planning, or rather procrastinating my next move. A couple of weeks later, she comes back to me, mentioning that her mate's friend is flying over to the country. This friend's place fell through, and could Elsa stay with me for the weekend? At first, I wasn't keen on the idea, but then she said it might take a while to find another flat for Elsa. So what if she stayed for two or three weeks and paid me for it? I still didn't want to agree, but eventually caved in, thinking, well, at least it's just for a short while and I'll get some cash. Why was that bloody wrong? The girl shows up and she seems alright, things are fine at first, but I soon find out she's actually my flatmate's cousin, not some random mate of a mate. I brush that off. Then the little things started happening. The temporary roomie starts marking her territory in the room, like wanting to divide stuff, asking me to create space for her and move my things, adding new stuff in the room. I didn't say anything. Then there were the constant bloody loud phone calls, or her randomly using my stuff without asking. And Ellie, who never used to enter my room, would just randomly show up all the time and lounge around, chatting it up with Elsa. Quickly, I noticed how they would exclude me from most of their chat. English isn't their first language, so they'd speak their own whenever I was there. And I realized later it's because they were talking crap about me. But what really broke the camel's back was when one night I wanted to use the oven to bake because I'd run out of other food supplies and my card wasn't working. Then Ellie tells me no, that the oven uses too much electricity, and they just paid the last bill so no one is allowed to bake for a while. I tried to explain, saying that I understood, but I wasn't doing this to win the Great British Bake Off, I literally had nothing else to eat. She still firmly said no. I brought up how I pay for the bills too, and she uses stuff that takes up a lot of electricity, and I never say anything. She still said no, turned off the gas cooker. Let's all take a note that it was a gas cooker. And told me to figure it out myself. Then Elsa decides to chip in and take her cousin's side, saying I should have planned better and it's not a must for me to bake. So why can't I just shut up and not make a fuss? At that point, I just lost it and went off at them. Yay! Especially at the new girl, saying that she's new and not really a flatmate, so it's not her place to talk to me about how I'm supposed to eat or cook anything pertaining to the bills she's definitely not paying. In the end, I went over to the neighbor's place and they helped me order something. After that debacle, 
I realized I just didn't want to deal with the drama anymore. I wanted my peace back. So I went up to Ellie a day after the two or three weeks were up and said, Your friend has been here for a total of three weeks. When is she moving? Then Ellie switches it up, asking why I'm trying to back out of something I agreed to. And I said, no, I didn't agree to her staying here indefinitely. You said two or three weeks. Then she goes on to say her cousin paid the deposit already and she's going to have to return it somehow, blah, blah. Things have been hard for the girl's parents and she doesn't have a job too. And I'm being mean for no reason. Mind you, they both went on a shopping spree a couple of days prior, but now the girl is too broke to move out? This goes on for the rest of the day, and I'm being gaslit into thinking I'm a horrible person. They all just lead to me deciding to move out immediately because I was just done and tired of it all. When move out day comes, it's been silent treatment from all of us. I go to Ellie because I paid for three or four months worth of bills. Something I didn't want to do, but she forced us all to agree to, saying it's smart and bills can be paid with no hassle now. Then you shouldn't need to pay them in advance. And I ask for the money back, telling her to simply subtract the first month and give me the rest. She says no, repeating the same rubbish about me agreeing to drop the money, and that I can't back out now. This leads to a very heated argument, and it dawns on me midway that she was doing all this so her stupid cousin wouldn't have to pay her share of the bills with me gone, so my extra money would cover that. This leads to me getting even angrier, and after her crappy boyfriend finally intervenes, I get the money back. At that point, I was just so knackered with it all, so I bottled it up and tried to forget it. At least until today, when I brought it up with a mate and they looked at me in horror, wondering why I put up with that. I don't know if it's just me, but there's something about not wanting to create bad blood with people you live with, but it just ends up being a very, very terrible experience for you, and you wonder why you bother trying to keep the peace that was never there. For a crumb of context, I just moved back in with some friends after initially getting kicked out over dishwashing related issues and anger management problems currently seeking therapy for the latter and have largely resolved the former. My new living situation has four of us in a 1,200 square foot, two-story home. Three bedrooms are upstairs and one is downstairs. My old roommate that moved into the house with me is downstairs, and I have a small 10 by 11 foot room. There's another bedroom roughly that same size and the master bedroom. The problem roommate has the master bedroom, which is, by conservative estimates, Roughly the size of both other upstairs bedrooms combined, has a sizable personal bathroom with natural lighting, a much bigger closet, and storage room. The said roommate orders various food for himself on DoorDash multiple times a week, and will just let the trash from that accumulate. I asked him if he could clean up the trash from last night's DoorDash order, and his response verbatim was, Yes, I mind cleaning it up, because I bought it. I ended up having to clean it, just so the communal space wouldn't become ground zero for bugs. You want ants? That's how you get ants. Hell, he got Wendy's door dashed last Monday, and the trash from that was still in the living room Friday. He has so much trash piled up in his room, I'm genuinely surprised he isn't seeing multiple roaches a day. I don't give much of a crap about the state of his room at this point. Every time I've so much as offered to help, he gets angry and aggravated. What I care about is the communal spaces. He'll leave his trash all over, bring card game stuff from his room down and refuse to take it back upstairs, and then complain when things are a mess. He initially kicked me out because I would, in my first year of living with him, point out that someone needed to do the dishes. In some sense, this was to help my unmedicated AUDHD. Remember to actually do them, of course, I kept forgetting to, which sparked the aforementioned issues. He would routinely say, well, that someone could have been you. Barely a month into having moved back in with him, he complained that the dishes were greasy after I washed them. He still refuses to clean the dishes himself, and will just leave a mess of dishes to clean in the sink. He and I both have asthma. Mine only really tends to flare up in stuffy and hot environments and my small bedroom gets hot really fast between heat generated from my PC and being directly above the kitchen, and we're pretty sure it's above the radiator too. 
I have on multiple occasions asked politely if we could kick the fan on or the AC so the air could circulate in my room. His response almost every time is, no, my feet are freezing already. Feel like they're about to fall off. In the middle of summer in the southern US, it's hotter and muggier than an ogre's taint outside. Oh my. He can literally go outside or put on some socks or get a nice blanket. His comfort shouldn't be prioritized over my ability to breathe in my own room. But no. I have to turn off my PC for like an hour and let the room circulate when the fan decides to kick on. Just so his feetsies aren't getting chilly. Adding to his hell, whenever we're playing board games, he insists on being the rules arbiter and controls damn near every aspect of the game. To the point where even cooperative games like Pandemic Legacy just turn into him doing everything. Even games that I own, he'll insist on being the rules guy and taking full command of the experience. Sprinkling the last crap on a diarrhea sandwich, he complains about his finances a fair bit, not like every day, but probably every other week or so. But he's the guy that insisted on getting the most expensive TV, pays for multiple subscriptions, and again door dashes several times a week. The first year I lived with him, he fell for not only a security company door-to-door -door sales pitch, but when they were installing the internet hardware, they pitched him a phone plan. He turned to me and said, Now watch this. And ended up with a brand new phone. He just does not know how to manage money wisely at all. And then complains when he is inevitably next to broke. He works full time. He should have a lot more than one tenth of what I have in my bank account in his. Especially considering I only work part time. I'm seriously getting to the point where I'm going to either have to put an ultimatum of some kind out after I figure out any kind of potential feasible alternate living situation and get the hell out of here, or convince my other two roommates that the problem guy needs to go. Issue is, the other roommate we moved in with also leaves dishes and DoorDash everywhere, and everyone but me has some kind of anime tradition with the problem individual. Not that I don't like anime. Just that the ones they all tend to watch are usually not interesting to me. Hellfreezer's note, your top priority definitely needs to be finding another place to live. And as soon as you do, get out of there. Uh, what you should also do, they're not super expensive. Uh, go to Walmart, get yourself a good strong floor fan. And set that in your bedroom. It really shouldn't be any of their business, what you're doing in your own bedroom. So that should help circulate the air, keep things cool, definitely crack a window. And on the, the really warm days when it's very, very sunny, draw your curtains. That will help cool the room as well. Uh, it might mean you're having to put you know electricity on, like lamps and things, but it does definitely help cool things down. It will be a temporary situation until you can move somewhere that you know you're, you're not getting harassed by a roommate and able to make use of the AC. Uh, assuming your new place has AC. Fact of the matter is, it's just one of those situations where you've got three people you're just not compatible with. I don't think either of you are necessarily bad people, but when you put otherwise reasonable people in a, situa a living situation, it's just not going to be tenable in the long term if, you're, if, you, if your needs aren't in sync. Best of luck, and I hope it works out for everybody involved. Five. I'm a college student with a job living with three other girls in Texas. We have two bedrooms and two bathrooms, which is really convenient. Especially because the rent is so cheap. The roommate I'm sharing my room with brought her cat to our apartment to recover from surgery in February. The cat was only supposed to stay here for two weeks, but now she wants him to stay. To my knowledge, she doesn't plan on paying the $600 security deposit to have him at our apartment, so we have to hide the cat from the manager, which is fine, but a liability. This cat is my nightmare. He scratches and pushes and cries at our bedroom door to enter if we don't let him inside. So I have to let him in our room on his terms because he starts to tear up our carpet outside the door. He knocks down my roommate's belongings on her desk in the middle of the night and the morning. I'm a light sleeper, but I can go back to sleep easily. I have not been able to sleep 
because he won't stop unless he runs out of energy, and if I kick him out of the room, he cries and screams to get back in. Last night I woke up at 2am to him crying, and I only slept like three hours after that. My roommate, on the other hand, is a heavy sleeper and rarely wakes up to her cat being annoying. The cat has also gotten more comfortable with me and has started to go through my stuff under my bed and on my desk, which is another reason I don't sleep. Because I have to make sure he doesn't start making a mess out of my stuff, too. I know the logical solution is to talk to my roommate, which I plan on doing, I just hate confrontation. My roommate isn't mean, and I would say we get along pretty okay. I like to talk to her sometimes, but I do consider her messy and inconsiderate. My sleep schedule has gotten worse since I moved in because she doesn't wake up to her 4.30am to 7am alarms. Sometimes she's such a heavy sleeper. So, on top of the cat situation, there's that situation as well. But I'm more focused on the fact that her cat has become my living nightmare. I have two cats at my family home I love so much. They can be annoying, but my family and I know how to deal with them, because they're usually just bored or hungry. I haven't met such a difficult cat until now. My roommate can return her cat to her family because her siblings miss the cat, but she has said she doesn't plan on returning the cat to them. I feel bad for the cat. His litter box doesn't really get cleaned, it's filled with waste. I don't know how it doesn't smell as bad as it looks, but it still smells gross. My roommate works two jobs and goes out a lot, so I understand how lonely and boring it is for him. She doesn't really play with him, and when she does, it's aggressive, which explains why he bites me and my other roommates. He'll sometimes randomly attack our legs. My other roommates don't really care, since they don't have to deal with him the way I do. We haven't really talked about it, but we did agree his litter box is way too dirty. Has anyone dealt with a similar situation, or can provide any advice on how to go about talking about this to my roommate? Hellfreezer's note, I think you have to be gentle at first, uh, but then blunt, but you definitely just have to tell your roommate what the problem is. She's obviously not there taking care of the cat, it's not fair to the cat. They need stimulation, they need someone who can give them attention, and in her family home, he's obviously going to get that. He's not getting that in the college dorm. And as you said, the cat's not meant to be there anyway. You could all get fined if the landlord finds the cat there. I'm sure it's not going to be a fun conversation to have, but rather that than continuing to lose out on sleep in a foul-smelling room. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Bad Roommates, episode 26. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you have any stories yourself you'd like to send in for this or any other series, send them along to kingofthecities at gmail.com. That is on the screen right now, and is also in the description. Speaking of description, you'll find a link there to my Patreon page if you'd like to get access to these videos all at once on a Monday. Support me there for as little as a dollar a month, and it helps keep the channel going as long as we can. You'll also find links to the Hellfreezer Discord server, as well as a Hellfreezer merchandise store on Teespring. I don't think we've any other bits and bobs today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... What herb or spice do you find you run out of quickest? I tend to either run out of garlic in whatever form, like ground garlic, garlic granules, that sort of thing, or one I quite like, I've been using for a little while now, called garlic pepper. Uh, my local supermarket sells it. I usually buy their own brand because it's cheaper and it's very nice. It's very nice with pasta. Why don't you let me know what you think in a comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day from a previous video. And this one comes from Bad Roommates 24 and was about whether you want to live with either a bad roommate or a ghost from one of the paranormal stories. And today's answer comes from Jano Comas. I grew up in a haunted house. The ghost there actually looked after the family and it was very taken with me. So I would much rather live with her any day and hope she continues to follow me to my next home. Thank you very much for your answer. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourself.